Hi, I'm Benestel, your favorite gospel artist, and this is Benestel Inspires. Today's episode has some cute little sounds to it. And yes, we will be talking about kids. Beautiful kids. Stay with us, we'll be back in a second. Well, I'm back, and today I have with me someone with a very, very big heart for kids by the name of Team Giliana. Team, tell us about yourself. You know, I'm yes. so happy you're here. Yeah, I'm happy to be here too. Um, <laughs> just a little bit about myself in short. Um, mm -hmm. I grew up in a Christian home. My dad yes. was a pastor. My mom was a stay-at-home mom, and she really invested in us when it came to scriptures and, and walking in the way and mm. you know as you get older you start questioning yes and making choices uh that don't exactly reflect um this everything that my parents have taught me so mm -hmm. you, i went in a little bit of an off direction always okay. knew who god was mm. um obviously i didn't find joy outside of it and um knew the truth and just came back and i was like early 20s and since then my life has been focused on serving him, loving him, and loving mm. those around me. Wow, that's amazing. That's that's interesting that you said that because I think a lot of people that uh, grew up in a Christian home have that epiphany mm. moment where they're like, okay, I think I'm going to go find out yeah. what's outside. Uh, but unfortunately, some people don't find the way back. Mm -hmm. That's the sad reality. But you were graced of God and you found your way back. And not only did you find your way back, you made a decision and choice to follow and serve him, which is very amazing. But I think what I like more mm. is the way you chose to serve him. You are the director of Angelic Treasures Daycare. Um, and I have to say, mm -hmm. I love your daycare. Because Thank you. I mean, there's so much of the presence of God in that place. Amen. And of course, out there for different reasons, you see, get them young. Mm -hmm. And I think this fits perfectly for that. So why did you go in the direction of a daycare? I mean, kids, children can be, oh boy, <laughs> why that way? Great question. Yeah. <laughs> um, because my dad was a pastor mm -hmm. and it was in Assyrian and yes. my Assyrian is not good. <laughs> So they had me doing children's ministries okay. and I was just doing it by default. Um, okay. So did really well. Parents loved it. Um, I got a summer job mm -hmm. working at a camp and okay. I was working with four or five year olds and it was just natural for me. Parents enjoyed it. Children enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, what can I do with this? And so my idea was actually to be a principal. Okay. I had a really cool principal and he inspired me. <laughs> Okay. Did two years of schooling and God kind of said, I'm going to put you in a different direction. Okay. Started working in daycares and I always said, if I ever get the chance, I want to open up a Christian daycare mm. because the values that were instilled in me at a young age yes. stayed with me mm. and I know the power there. And so I was, it was a thought. Okay. I just kept talking to God and I would say it as in like, to sound ambitious, like, mm -hmm. you know, one day I'll have my own, it'll be Christian, but I never actually thought it would happen. And that's the beauty of God. Like he yes. just came, intervened, opened the door. I'm in business with my brother. He is a man of God and we help each other. And that's like in short how he, he's brought us here. And it's it's mm. been a huge uh, blessing for us, my kids, my brother's kids, and all the children that uh, that attend. It's been amazing. It absolutely has been a blessing. I mean, you, I don't know if I will ever find the words to express to you the relief mm. when I came to your daycare uh, because I was looking for a place for my child and I said to myself, I want to honestly leave the scripture that says, train up a child in yeah. the way they should go and when they grow, they will not depart from Amen. it. I mean, I, I was born in a Christian home as well. and. Um, it got to a point where not going to church on a Sunday morning felt weird. Yeah. What am I doing here? Why am I home? What, what would you be doing? Would you be watching TV? Would you be, you know what I mean? So um, it stayed with me. Mm -hmm. And that's what I really wanted to transfer to my children. So when I saw your daycare, I was like, oh my goodness, this, 
I mean, this exists right here. <laughs> I was so excited. Um, but there's so many beautiful things that you do in your daycare that I think are very um, pointed, if I should put it that way, like they're mm -hmm. well thought out. Um, you do send us, uh, or you send parents, <laughs> an email every week with a verse of the week. Yes, yes, um, yes. That you teach the children. And um, th there was one recently, I believe it was actually this week, that spoke about how um, God can use you. Amen, yeah. So we're teaching these little ones that God can use them. Where did that idea come from? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a great question again. Uh, really, it's, it's building a curriculum for mm -hmm. the children mm -hmm. that is basic, that they can understand, and is applicable. Because okay. uh, that's what we receive. When we, we gather for fellowship and even on Sundays to hear a message, the, those are the message, messages that are preached to us and they speak to us. Yes. So it's like, how do we do that for them? Okay. Where they can understand it and not just understand it, but be able to live it. Yes. So teaching them the simple things like that, um, love and how do we love and, mm -hmm. you know, even respecting simple things like the nature around us, how God created it, all these mm -hmm. things, they can understand it and even apply it to their lives, right? For me, it's always been looking at children as capable and competent, mm. right? There's a reason why Jesus said, let the children come, come to, to me. me. Like they're not too young to learn yes. and understand. Yes. Um, and so that's the kind of the approach that we take at Angelic Treasures. And even on Fridays, we gather together and uh, we do chapel time. So okay. we'll sing some songs, um, go over the verse and the message they learned that week. Mm -hmm. And even at the end, a little bit of uh, music and movement in this like praise music, so okay. they enjoy, we, we can listen to God's uh, word, praise Him, even through dance. So it's not mm. always, like singing 100% is a beautiful version, but yes. sometimes we miss out on the dancing part, so they enjoy wow. that too. Well, that's amazing. So you've built activities around the children that allows them to learn about God without feeling like, oh, they are forcing me to do it. <laughs> yeah. You know? I think we've all been there <laughs> where your parents are in your case about, we're going to have morning devotion. You're like, oh my God, we have yeah, to pray yeah. today. Is God even listening to us? You know? Um, but I like that you you build activities around the children, um, especially because you have them from being infants mm -hmm. all the way to, I believe, junior or senior kindergarten? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um, that's a big gap. That's, that's a wide yeah. age range and you have to, you know, keep them seated and keep them listening. I, I think um, that there's something that made me laugh um, on, on the Thursday report that you sent to, to parents. I, I think that's amazing, by the way. Uh, parents, you, you need to go to this daycare. This is the place <laughs> to be. Peace of mind guaranteed. Uh, so the report comes about how they were practicing. And then I saw my son in the video while they were practicing. Some people were practicing and doing the dance and my son was like, oh, I think I'm going to talk to my neighbor. So <laughs> I felt like I wanted to jump in the video and be like, can you just do what they're telling you to do? But at the end, everybody raised their hand and he went, hey! <laughs> and I thought it was adorable. Um, do you find it difficult sometimes? For me, no. I, I hear people and I understand it when they say working with children, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of energy, yes. a lot of emotion. Um, but for me, I, I enjoy it. It's just like someone saying they love working with their hands. Yes. I understand it. I'm, that's not me. I enjoy mm -hmm. the children. God has given me the patience. Mm -hmm. I've developed more over the years. Um, and so I don't get bothered with okay. when it comes to any situation with children and that even helps with my relationships outside of the daycare and children where Ooh. I'm more patient more calm more mm. relaxed and, and um it that has blessed my relationships as well amazing so what has it done to your relationship to God and the reason I'm asking that question is because you know daycares have all sorts of kids you have kids from different backgrounds different homes um you have kids that have siblings so they pick up big brother or big sister's bad habits and then they fight over things yeah, yeah. and then you have kids that have no siblings so it's a little easier to get through to them because well you're the only sibling nobody's influencing you or you get the opposite i'm the only sibling i'm spoiled i do yeah. whatever i like <laughs> so how do you deal with all these personalities in small formats you know kids <laughs> can have a mind of their own oh big time big time for me it's just understanding the uniqueness of every child okay. um you can't have cookie cutter type um, solutions, mm -hmm. it doesn't work. Cause just like you said, children are very unique, even with yes. their family dynamic, with their personalities. Mm -hmm. So the biggest thing is actually learning about the child. 
if they're exhibiting a behavior, the question is, okay, why is that, mm. right? And not labeling the child with the behavior. Mm. Um, and that, that helps us learn and grow because the idea is to help them to grow in the right yes. direction. Yes. Um, we as adults, we have God's word we can turn to and we can read and really helps direct us. Mm -hmm. um, and he, I learned a lot about who God is by interacting with kids. I'm like, okay. I see how much you put up with, <laughs> right? And yet you still love right. us. <laughs> You still love us, you still care for us, and you still want what is best for us. Yes. Um, so I always try to put that at the forefront of my mind. Mm. So what would God want? How Even like, you know, WWJD, what would, yes. Jesus, what would do? Jesus do? That's what I think about a lot. Okay, if Jesus was actually running this daycare, mm -hmm. how would he respond? How would he interact? How would he lead? And that's actually one of my number one prayers, is how can I be Christ-like mm. um, today, right? And that everyday father, I just want to honor you while I'm here. I want to make sure that um, it's going the way you want it to go. Wow. You know, what just came through my mind is that must be some heavy duty pressure because, well, there's an expectation of yourself that you want to be Christ-like for these children and you want them to see God in the things you do, mm -hmm. but also kind of from the parents. Because, I mean, from a parent perspective, you're thinking, oh, I'm sending my child to a Christian baker. I'm expecting mm -hmm. some Christian reflections on those children. Um, do you happen to have moments, even during your day, uh, where maybe a child is not going the way you want it, and you're like, oh, my goodness, today. Do you have chats with God? Like, those, you know, the spontaneous moment where God is like, nah, you better not do that. <laughs> do you have those? Uh, yeah, it's uh, continual conversations with him throughout the day, definitely. Uh, that helps me stay grounded, that helps me keep my mind in the right direction. Because you're right, situations come up, um, problems arise, and I find if I just focus on the problem or on the solution on my own, mm -hmm. um, I get overwhelmed. So mm. just having the conversation with him throughout the day keeps him at the center. Yes. So that doesn't matter what arises, it's God, I just, I need your guidance, I need your help, I need your blessing. Even if it's, you know, a child exhibiting negative behavior, like even hitting. Hitting is, you know, it's, uh, it breaks your heart, kids, right? And it breaks your heart <laughs> to see. It's like, why did you, why did you do that? Um, but it's taking a step back and correcting the behavior at the same time, showing them the love. Okay. Right? And, and that, I think, children understand that so much just like with us when when we do something wrong we understand he loves us we understand there is correction but knowing that his love doesn't change yes because i made a choice and when the children see that it it helps them go in the right direction amazing and i was actually going to ask about that um if you had a child that was both ways you know when kids do great things we commend them you want to boost their confidence uh, but then sometimes they do something not so great and you want yeah. to correct it um in an environment where you have so many children and sometimes i don't listen uh, you know kids have a very interesting way of exhibiting yeah, yeah. funny behaviors um i've seen kids that if they are embarrassed about what they did they throw a tantrum so it's not that they want to be a bad kid it's more like they're trying to you know, kind of mask that emotion of, I'm not the bad kid of the day. Yeah, How yeah. do you deal with that? Have you had situations where you had to sit with a child, for example, and say, you know, Jesus would have done this or that. Do, do you have moments like that for the children? Yes. So let's say a child's in the class and being very disruptive. Mm -hmm. I, I will have one-on-ones with them. Okay. Um, it's a little bit different because I'm outside the class and they yes. know I'm um, I guess you'd say the boss, so they listen a little bit better. Yes. Um, but yeah, I'll have those one-on-ones and, and definitely bringing it back to Jesus um, and helping them understand, like, when I do this, my actions, it hurts them, mm -hmm. right? So how would I feel if it happened to me? What would I want, mm -hmm. right? And going back to what Jesus says is, it doesn't say don't do to others what you don't want done to yourself. Mm -hmm. it's take action. Do, do unto others. And they can understand that. So explaining to them, what would you like done mm -hmm. for yourself? Okay, well, why don't you do that? Because mm -hmm. you can, and teaching them, you can be a role model. Yes. So if you're doing it, they can learn, and then it creates such a beautiful environment. Um, and they will grasp the main concepts of that. They 100% they will. Um, mm. And then when they understand, okay, I have an impact, I can make a change, you usually see the change in their behavior. It takes time. It takes time. <laughs> I was about to say. Not overnight. <laughs> It's not overnight, but they can Must be some distance. 
<laughs> oh, but that's very beautiful. And I, I think that's particularly special because, you know, throughout the Bible, we see that God has a special place for children. Mm -hmm. um, he protects them. He's very protective of children, of all his children, but the little ones particularly, just like a natural parent would protect a little baby a little more than the older yeah. kid. You should know better. <laughs> you know, that kind of behavior. Um, what are the things that bring you joy in doing wow. this? Yeah, that's a really good question. <laughs> um, I think the joy comes from knowing this is where he wants me to be. Mm -hmm. Knowing the impact it has. Because we have families that aren't Christian as well, but they want to stay away from a lot of what I would say is the evil that's being taught at such mm -hmm. a young age. Mm -hmm. And that opens the door to uh, even a bigger ministry. So it's not just ministering to those that uh, have a heart for God and want their children to be um, raised in that. It's, it's now... I get to talk to people with different um, beliefs, different religions, and mm -hmm. um, he's bringing them to my door. Because my prayer used to be, Father, like, I pray for opportunities to speak truth. Mm -hmm. That's been one of my big prayers growing up. And sometimes I question, like, God, I'm not meeting new people, like, I'm trying. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, it's at my door. They're all coming. And so that is the joy. It's like, I know I'm doing what he wants. And I just, yeah, I truly want to honor him through it. That's very inspiring. I, I have to admit that that's quite a perspective. <laughs> and it's really, really touching uh, knowing how innocent children are. They trust you. Mm -hmm. You are the mom and dad they see throughout the day until mom and, come and, yeah. mom and dad sorry, comes and picks them up. Um, is there something that sometimes you feel, Father, and grace for this, or maybe a desire in your heart that you have for... I don't want to say just angelic treasures, but also for children at large. Is there something that you, you're seeing that you're like, oh my God, you know what? I wanted to cross the board in, in 30 seconds. <laughs> 30 seconds. Um, mainly for children to feel loved and accepted. See, when they have that at such a young age, it opens the door for them to learn, right? Because mm -hmm. if you're not confident, you're not comfortable, you're not really learning, and then they kind of... Um, the growth is hindered mm -hmm. and the beauty about growing is is learning to ask questions and, and wanting to know more mm -hmm. and i feel like even for an unbeliever that extends to okay what is life about why am i mm -hmm. here why am i living and not just okay i'm trying to live to get by so all that learning takes place at a young age and it really just does start with feeling accepted and feeling loved because those having the opposite of those builds trauma mm -hmm. and that trauma can take you on a course in a really bad direction, direction. Mm -hmm. yeah and then you know so many negative things come from that so mm -hmm. um really just yeah keeping the trauma away from children at a young age awesome yeah. thank you so much for doing that for us thank you for taking care of our children um where can we find you yes well we are located in mississauga mm -hmm. um ontario okay. um you can find us online at angelic treasures christian daycare Dot com. Perfect. There's a few locations, so mm -hmm. there are options, which is nice. And we're trying to grow it so that this is an option for many families out there. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, team. I've been so blessed having you here. Children are so dear to us. Yes. You've heard it. You've heard him. This is the place to go. And yes, do not forget the little children. Angelic Treasures is the right place for them. Until I see you again, I am Ben Estelle, your favorite gospel artist, and it's Ben Estelle Inspires, where we stay inspired. Till I see you again, God bless you. Thank you for watching today's episode of Benestel Inspires. I believe you were blessed, uplifted, and inspired. Thank you for following us. Thank you for sharing our videos. And thank you for liking. Thank you for giving it to your community, to your family and loved ones, and encouraging them to follow our pages and watch us. All our social media links are on your screen and you can follow us anywhere you choose to. We are on Instagram as The Official Benestel. We are on Facebook as The Official Benestel. We're on Twitter as Benestel3. And we are also on King's Chat, where you can find us where Kings Chat. If you are here today 
and you do not know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I would love to give you the opportunity to receive him into your heart today. It is a simple journey, but absolutely beautiful and it is worth it. Just repeat after me. Dear Father, I come to you today and I give you my life. I believe that Jesus is your son, that he died for me, for my sins, and rose again on the third day. I receive him today as my personal Lord and Savior. I am your child. I am born again. Thank you, Father, for my new life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you received Jesus today, congratulations and welcome to the family of God. Connect with us at www.benestel.com and tell us you've received Jesus. We would love to hear more and we would love to be able to pray with you. Until I come your way one more time, thank you for watching Benestel Inspires. I am Benestel, your favorite gospel artist. God bless you and see you soon. I believe in your word, I believe what you've spoken, I believe in your power, I believe with all my heart, I believe that you are what you say that you are, Lord I believe, yes I believe that it is your power, it is your grace. Lord, it's your word that has brought me this far. Lord, I believe it and I receive. Here in your presence, I'm reminded again to just trust in you. I'm amazed by your way, Lord, I believe, yes, I believe, that it is your power, it is your grace, Lord, it's your word that has brought me this far.
never change your mind about me Oh, I will trust in you 